Hello and welcome back to Multimodal. I'm your host, Baxty Future. Today I wanted to talk about the new kinds of OpenAI competition. And I'm not speaking from a business perspective today. I'm speaking from the perspective of a developer using these models, like just the quality of the outputs. Um, so the two models that I want to talk about is Eleuther AI's GPTJ and Cogview. So if you don't know, GPTJ is a language model, uh, which is released free and open source by an open source, I guess, collective called Eleuther AI. Um, and their engine is a couple billion parameters and Eleuther estimates it's on par with OpenAI's GPT-3 Curry engine. Okay, so it's GPTJ, which is on par with OpenAI's GPT-3 Curry. <clears throat> um, at the same time, there's something called Cogview, which people are calling quote unquote Chinese Dally. <laughs> which is a multimodal model where you can enter text and get back an image. Uh, Cogview is 4 billion parameters, and I believe OpenAI's DALI, which is not released yet, is I think 11 to 12 billion parameters. So I, I believe Cogview is like a third the size, right? Now, I don't know how I feel about people calling it quote-unquote Chinese DALI. I think it, a little bit flirting with like... <laughs> some like some like racist or you know some kind of thing like that like uh, you know i i don't think it's polite uh but i mean i also don't think it comes from a bad place necessarily because it, it is chinese dali in the sense that you like you need to enter chinese simplified chinese in order to get back an image you can't enter english right so i mean i guess people are calling it quote unquote chinese dali i will not be calling it chinese dali for the purposes of this conversation uh, I will be calling it Cogview, which is the name the authors gave it. Um, but anyway, so uh, Cogview, right, is 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 is, is sort of a, a DALI free open source competitor, right? And so these are the two models I'll be talking about today. I'll start with GPTJ. I so I put out a Twitter poll yesterday, asking how is everybody finding GPTJ versus GPT three Curry. And so far, the results are neck and neck. It's 50-50. Uh, people are saying GPTJ, they're, they're, you know, it's just as good as GPT-3 Curry. Now, I, I was, I'm, you know, the, the poll isn't done yet. And I encourage you guys, you know, follow me on Twitter at B-A-K-Z-T Future um, to also vote. But I, I like, I'm finding still GPT-3 Curry is better than GPTJ, right? I feel the quality of the results are better for various tasks, you know, generation, prediction, all my usual stuff. I mean, look, I, I have an intuition for these kinds of things. When I use GPT-3 DaVinci, I can tell that like, this is DaVinci, you know, and and maybe this would be a cool video where I like sort of blind taste test myself <laughs> with different Eleuther AI models and different GPT-3 models. And let's see how accurately I can predict which engine it's coming from. But I mean, I have an intuition for these kinds of things. My intuition tells me GPT-3 Curry is still better than GPT-J. Now, the peculiar part is, you know, Eleuther AI published, you know, like stats, right? And, you know, on the benchmarks they were training against, I believe it's on par or better, right? So, I mean, props to them, right? Uh, at the same time, uh, Eleuther AI super props, they even talked about their data set, right? Where it is more from a diverse data set than GPT-3 was trained on. It's trained on more different kinds of data. And I, I am hearing on Twitter that GPT-J, especially for code stuff, does a lot better than GPT-3 Curry. So there might be specific domains. But I guess the only thing I'm, I'm saying is just from an intuitive perspective, and it's subjective, I could be completely wrong. I just, I'm finding GPT-3 Curry is still better. And look, that's my opinion. I want to hear from you guys, right? Participate in the, in the, in the Twitter poll. You know, you can write in the YouTube comments, wherever. Let me know, right? How are you finding GPT-J? Is it just as good? Like what, what scenarios did it did do really well at? And the, I guess my only thing is, you know, I want you to, you know, answer honestly and also keep in mind like i'm not saying gptj isn't the better choice overall right because 
you might you might prefer GPTJ because it's free, because it's open source, right? Maybe maybe you don't want to work with OpenAI. Maybe you know you don't want to collaborate them. You don't want them to have control over your product. Maybe your interest is only fine tuning, anyways, right? And so you just need like you know a couple billion parameter model. You're gonna fine tune it. GPTJ is is probably the better choice in that case. So who cares about GPT three Curry? But I'm saying outside of those cases, like I'm saying, if you didn't have to worry about money, if you didn't have to worry about too much of a business applicability, just in terms of the quality of the outputs, how are you finding GPTJ versus GPT three Curry? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, I, you know, I clearly described, I feel one way, I lean more towards open AI, right? But the thing is, by saying that, the, the broader question is, is there some kind of open AI, excuse me, is there some kind of open AI secret sauce that we don't know about? Right? <laughs> because I guess in theory, with as much similar data with, you know, the similar model, um, you know, similar amounts of training data and compute spent, you know, if there is some difference between GPTJ and GPT-3 Curry, why is that, right? And like, does OpenAI have some kind of secret sauce that we don't know about, right? Now, this is, you know, this is more on the conspiracy theory end of the spectrum. I, I actually don't think they have, they, they may, but I just don't think they're hiding anything that they could have done differently because, look, they're, they're pretty, you know, they publish their research pretty uh, openly. I, I, I don't get the sense they obfuscate a lot of the research findings in the research papers. They open source a lot of their code. They speak openly. Um, but it could be possible, maybe, that there is some special sauce there, which is of corporate interest, which was off limits for talking about. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, right? They, they switched to for-profit, so who's to say, right? Like, they're not a non-profit anymore. Um, and, and, and at the same time, like, like a Luther published their data sources and compared it to open AIs. It is more diverse, but I like, like, I just, I think maybe, maybe open AI did more stuff with their data. Like I, I, maybe, maybe the model stuff is, is pretty, um, is pretty standardized or the scaling up of the parameters. That stuff is all like the normal stuff. But I, I suspect maybe there was more going on in the training data that OpenAI did. Maybe it's higher quality. Maybe it has less duplicates. Maybe it's cleaner. And and as a result of better training data, the model is better. Um, I mean, I mean that that's my theory. That if there was a secret sauce, maybe it's something like that, right? But I I, I mean, look, if you look at a Luther, I would have thought it's coming from more diverse sort of data sets, and they're very public about it. I, at least my opinion, I would have thought GPTJ would be better in theory. Maybe diversity is bad. I don't know, right? Again, like I don't have access to multi-billion models that I can train and compare. And also, to be honest, maybe the way I'm evaluating is not good. Like this subjective, intuitive kind of stuff. Like obviously that's not, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know. I think we need to test it at a bigger scale with more people blindly testing to really uh, evaluate these models, right? But like, look, I, I don't want to bash on GPTJ, you know, incredible achievement, open source, they're doing, you know, great things in the world. I, you know, I could be wrong that this is just my, how I'm finding it. It's really early, but uh, like, I also want to hear from other people. How are you finding GPTJ so far? Right. How, how are you finding it? What do you think? Um, am I wrong? Keeping all these things in mind, like you don't care about, like regardless of cost, regardless of all those other things, just the model output, how are you finding between the two? Right. And look, maybe, maybe the model parameter count has something to do with it as well. Like, like personally, like, um, these are the, like the lower tier models, the lower tier engines, right? GPT-3 Curry is one of the lower tier ones, right? Uh, maybe GPT Neo, maybe a Luther AI will release a DaVinci level 175 billion parameter model, and it, it will be just as good, right? Who's to say? I, I think it's, I think the comparisons are a lot. I think the comparisons will be a lot easier to tell at a larger parameter size when the expectations are higher, as opposed to a smaller parameter size where the, the bar is already low. Like I don't expect much from GPT-3 Curry as it is, right? And so I'm happy with the result, even if it's like a little bit still disappointing. <laughs> and so uh, anyways, just putting it out there. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to talk about Cogview. 
same similar deal. Like, you know, yes, it's four billion parameters, right? And Dali, I believe, was eleven or twelve billion, so it's about the third the size. But in my opinion, the results were just not as good as as what OpenAI showed in their Dali Dali research paper. And like look, I hope you know, on from the OpenAI perspective that those results that they have in the paper were not super hand picked. Right? Like I hope they were true few shot. Right? Like maybe less than five, maybe less than ten attempts, right? But if it was like a hundred or a thousand and they just picked the best ones, I think I'd feel away. <laughs> like it was sort of under over promised, under delivered kind of thing. But Cogview, I was you know, I I did not get as I, I was expecting almost Dally level results and I did not get them. And again, this goes back to the same points. Like, is there something OpenAI is doing? Do they have some kind of intuition or some kind of better approach to training data that I, be- I believe their models are just better, right? Uh, and maybe it's too early to say. Who's to say, right? I mean, it's my opinion. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm using these tools wrong. Cogview, again, is something I'd, I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, like what do you think? Um, like, how does it compare uh, I still like latent revisions. Uh, I, I think it is better than Cogview. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. Uh, at least based on what I entered, right? Um, and uh, anyways, like the 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 competition thing. It's worth noting. Like these are the models today, right? But you know, open source is always like that, right? The first few versions, you just have to be a super van. You have to put up with it. And then over time, they get very uh, industrially competitive very quickly, right? And they improve. And there's lots of people jumping in. Certainly, the Eleutheriae Discord is, is really active and really busy. There's a lot of people contributing in all these different ways, right? And so, anyways, like, I, I again, I don't want to make this an episode where I bash anybody. Like, Cogview is still a tremendous achievement. GPTJ is, is still a tremendous achievement. And... Um, I, I know these models will just get better. I guess, I guess the only question I'm sort of raising is even now is, is there things that OpenAI is still doing or did that, that we just don't know about. Right. And that, you know, maybe we need to reverse engineer those things as well in order to get models as good or better than OpenAI. But anyways, yeah, that's putting it out there. Open everyone's opinion. Uh, I also wanted to just briefly mention I started a subreddit earlier this year or maybe late last year called r slash multimodal. Um, it's not about the podcast. It, you know, it's just a community for people who want to chat about multimodal models. I've been sharing a lot of research, code, and even cool art people are making with multimodal models on the subreddit. I realized, you know, we're a few episodes into the podcast. I realized today, like, I've never, I don't think I've ever plugged the subreddit before. Uh, we're almost at a hundred members. And again, this is just something I run just for fun, just to like, you know, chat with others. It's about just building a community and like-minded people are interested in this stuff. And again, this is not even a, a place to, for the, for the podcast. Like I, I actually think the subreddit is its own thing. And so anyways, like if you're interested in just joining that community, join it, reddit.com slash r slash multimodal. Uh, join it free. Everyone's welcome. Uh, what other things? So yeah, I, I'm on Twitter, twitter.com slash B A K Z T future. Make sure you vote in that poll. How are you finding GPT J versus GPT three Curry? It is neck and neck. So, you know, I, I would appreciate you hopping in there. You already know about my Substack, B-A-K-Z-T-Future.substack.com. B-A-K-Z-T future.substack.com. You know about my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash B A K Z T future. And you know about this podcast. Uh, we are, you know, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it, everywhere, YouTube as well. I post it on there. Um, and if you could leave a review and, and a, you know, five-star rating for the podcast, I, I'd really appreciate it. I looked the other day on iTunes. We don't have any reviews. So if somebody wants to take some leadership there and, and, and give a nice review, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Um, yeah, that, that's it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day, night, evening, wherever you are. Uh, you know, I hope I hope you have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye.